what's up Cal gang? So we got a line and a GoPro on our hands. Looking pretty tough. There's a lot of the X's and Y's and cosines and sines and I don't want to do all that. So how are we going to avoid it? We're going to try Green's Theorem because this isn't a Green's Theorem problem. So, okay, let's, let's just go ahead and write it all we know. So we have C is the triangle from zero, zero. Let's draw this. Your starting a point, zero, zero, goes up to zero, four. So draw your lines to two, zero, going that way, and then back to zero, zero. So if you were solving this normally, you'd have to set up three line integrals because you have three different lines and they're not piecewise smooth. Uh, so yeah, I don't want to do it that way. So we're going to use Green's Theorem. And what Green's Theorem tells us is that if our region is closed and simple, basically, so let's see, this region is closed, perfect, and it's simple because there's no holes inside the region. So say if you were like subtracting a circle from there, it'd be not simple. So it's, our closed thing is closed and simple. And it also tells us that if it's counterclockwise, it's, uh, that's how you want it to be. Unfortunately, our region is not counterclockwise, it is normal clockwise. But if you want to get rid of that counterclockwise, all you have to do is add a negative outside of your integral. So let's not forget this, add a negative, right? We want to add a negative outside our integral, and then that'll reverse the order, basically. So we want it to be counterclockwise, we're going to add a negative. All right, so, and our, so if Green's theorem applies, it's just equal the uh, line integral is equal to the double or the double integral of the region with of a uh, derivative of q with respect to x minus the derivative of p with respect to y over the region. So let's go ahead and solve it. Let's see. So this is going to be equal to p, and this is going to be q because this corresponds to x and this corresponds to y. So let's take the derivative of p with respect to uh, y. All right, where am I? Okay, good. So derivative of let's do q first. I like to do q first with x because it comes first. So this respect to x is going to be y plus, and of course you have to do a little bit of product rule here, so that's going to be cosine of x, and then it's going to be, let's see, let's set up our little thing, so it's going to be 1 and then minus sine of x. So it's going to be cosine of x minus x sine of x, right? And then our derivative of p with respect to y is going to be equal to uh, cosine of x, and then let's see, yeah, with respect to y, so, uh, so it's going to be minus x sine of x, right? All right, now let's set up our integral, because we have everything we need, right? We have a region, we have this and that, we have all this. Uh, let's first evaluate this line. This line is y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. Of course, you're going to need your point slope form. Everyone's like, I don't need point slope form anymore. Yes, you do. You need it for calculus. All right, so our integral. So add our negative. Don't forget about the negative, all right? So it's going to be a double integral. So let's look at our region. So I'm going to do dy first. So y goes from 0 to negative 2, x plus 4. And then y goes from 0, wait a minute, x goes from 0 to 2. A little bit goofy. OK. So then we have our things. So it's going to be y plus cosine of x minus x sine of x minus cosine of x plus x sine of x dy dx. Pretty cool. All right, so now you'll notice that these things are going to cancel out, right? Boom, boom. And then this is going to cancel, and it's going to leave us with a really, really simple integral. All right, so don't forget your negative. You have to keep bringing that over. 0 to 2. Uh, 0 to 2 x minus plus 4. And then just y dy dx. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, uh, it's going to be a little tough. Maybe I want to solve it the other way. Now let's go ahead and solve it this way. I mean, I'm committed, right? negative 0 to 2, so this is going to be y squared over 2, so I'm going to bring out the 1 half, and then it's, it's going to be negative that squared. So 4x squared minus, it's going to be negative 16x plus 16 dx. All right, I don't have a lot of space left, do I? Uh, you guys don't need this anymore. Just get rid of it. All right, I'm moving this up here, solving it right here. So let's simplify this a little bit, and then we can solve it. Yeah, I want to simplify it. So it's going to be 2x squared minus 8x plus 8dx, which of course is going to be equal to, oh, I forgot my negative. Yeah, I'm telling you guys, can't forget the negative. So let's integrate this 2x to the third over 3 minus 4x squared plus 8x from 0 to 2. Ooh. Integrals. So, of course, it's going to be equal to negative 
16 over 3 minus, so, oh, 2 times 4, right, 16, then plus 16. 16s are going to cancel, and it just is going to leave you with negative 16 over 3. Final answer. That's the easy answer to solve this problem. Let's see, it took me five minutes to explain everything. It probably would have taken me at least, if it was possible, at least 30, oh, I don't even think it's possible to solve it the other way. I'm being totally honest. I don't think it's possible to solve it the other way. So yeah, this is how you solve it in five minutes instead of infinite time, because it's not possible. So yeah, uh, that's how you solve this problem. So good luck on your calc homework, and uh, enjoy. Subscribe.